Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of CCK Live. My name is Michael Lestrito, and today I'm joined by Dallas and Rachel, both accredited claims agents here at CCK. In this video, we'll be discussing what veterans should do after receiving an unfavorable CUP exam. So to get us started, Dallas, um, can you lay the foundation and just remind us what a CMP or a compensation and pension examination actually is. Definitely. CMP or compensation and pension exams are evaluations ordered by VA as a part of the disability claims process. Purpose of the exam is to evaluate a veteran's claim condition and determine if service connection is warranted or to evaluate the assigned rating of an already service-connected condition. So the examiner will usually be a VA-contracted physician in general, the examiner needs to be qualified to examine your particular condition, meaning that you shouldn't have an orthopedic doctor evaluating and opining on a mental health condition. So prior to the exam, the examiner should review the veteran's claims file so that they're familiar with the case. During the exam, the examiner may physically examine the veteran or ask questions about the veteran's service, disability, and the connection between the two. Afterwards, the examiner will create a report summarizing the exam and either support or disagree with the veteran's claim. The standard used is at least as likely as not versus less likely than not. To support the claim, the examiner will opine the condition is at least as likely as not caused by their service, and essentially this means that there is at least a 50% chance that the current disability is due to an in-service event or injury. Otherwise, the examiner may determine that the condition is less likely than not connected to service. So that sounds like a long, complicated process, Dallas. Um, and Rachel, you know, one of the things that I know we all hear a lot from veterans that we represent um, is, well, can I get a VA disability rating without going through that process, without getting a compensa compensation and pension examination? Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yes. So the short answer is yes. Um, in some cases, a CMP exam may be unnecessary and VA may not call for one. For example, a rater might not request an exam if they believe that there is enough evidence already in the record to make a fully informed decision. So while CMP exams are not required in every case, they are frequently requested by VA. However, once VA requests that a veteran undergo a CMP exam, they should make sure that they are able to attend. That's because if a veteran fails to schedule an exam or does not attend once scheduled, the claim could be denied outright just for that reason. So what happens if a veteran misses an exam unintentionally or cannot attend? In that case, they can contact VA as soon as possible and explain the circumstances and request that the exam be rescheduled. That's a really good point. Um, it's essentially low-hanging fruit for VA to deny on the on the sole basis that a veteran doesn't attend his or her exam. Um, I know the three of us have all seen it in our individual practices, um, and and it's something you know I think the adjudicators look for and can easily um, use as a reason to deny. So, you know, even if it might mean receiving an unfavorable examination result, which I'll talk about in a second here, um, we really can't stress enough the importance of attending a scheduled compensation and pension examination. Um, and, and the reason for that is that VA adjudicators do tend to give a lot of weight to compensation and pension exams um, when deciding veterans' claims for service connection and for increased rating payments. Um, that means that a negative or an unfavorable exam can severely impact a veteran's likelihood of winning a grant of benefits, unfortunately. So an unfavorable CMP exam um, might state, for instance, in the service connection case, that the veteran's condition is not related to service, or uh, you know, if the veteran is is claiming an increased rating for a condition that's already service connected, the CMP examiner may say that well, the condition is not as severe as the veteran is claiming that the condition might be. Um, it's possible, however, to overcome an unfavorable CMP exam. Although it does often require uh, the addition of, a, of additional evidence um, submitted into the record or to refute the examiner's findings. Uh, so Dallas, how would a veteran know, are there ways to know whether an examination went well or whether it went poorly? Yeah, this is a question I hear all the time. And 
really the best and often only way to tell how an exam is going to affect your claim is to read the actual exam report. But VA doesn't issue a copy of the exam to the veteran immediately unless they request it. So to do this, veterans should send a letter requesting a copy of the exam to their regional office. Once you receive a copy of the exam report, you should review it to ensure that the exam report adequately and accurately represents the details you reported during the exam. If not, or if the report is unfavorable, you'll likely want to refute the findings. So the next kind of topic here is overcoming an unfavorable or a negative compensation and pension examination. Um, oftentimes, unfortunately, challenging an exam can be difficult, and it often takes the skill of an accredited representative or attorney um, to know how to add additional evidence and what evidence to add to the record to overcome an unfavorable examination or um, to submit additional legal argument that addresses the case, the evidence, and the exam specifically to refute the findings um, that that particular compensation and pension examiner um, concluded in his or her report. Um, there are several ways, though, that veterans can address a negative exam. Uh, so, Rachel, maybe you can get us started here talking a little bit about private treatment records. Yes. Submitting additional private treatment evidence, as well as a statement explaining why you do not agree with the VA examiner's findings, can be really helpful. Private treatment records would be those created by a private treating physician, so that's someone not affiliated with VA, and therefore those records would not be easily accessible to readers in the same way records generated by the Veterans Health Administration might be. So, for example, if you see an orthopedic specialist for your knee condition outside of a VA facility, then you may wish to request treatment notes from that provider, especially if they are favorable for your claim and submit them to VA. Alternatively, there is a VA Form 21-4142 that authorizes VA to request those records directly, although submitting them yourself is often the fastest way to get them into the record. Um, but either way, submitting private treatment records, if you have them, will ensure that VA knows that you not only disagree with the examiner's report, but that evidence exists that could potentially support your claim. In, in Dallas, how about private medical opinions? These are, you know, opinions um, from a medical professional, maybe a physician, maybe another professional, outside of kind of the regular treatment that a veteran might undergo for that condition. Yeah, this is a great point. In addition to private treatment notes, a veteran might want to obtain a private medical opinion to review an examiner's report. Veterans are entitled to visit outside doctors and obtain opinions to be weighed with or against VA exams. These medical opinions are often completed by doctors who have specializations that relate to your condition versus a general practitioner from or contracted by VA. So as a result, they might have a better understanding of your condition and the medical literature surrounding it, and thereby provide a more adequate explanation of the causes of your condition and or its severity. Additionally, independent medical doctors are completely separate from VA, so a veteran might feel like this opinion will be rendered with a higher degree of objectivity. Now, another thing that comes up somewhat frequently, I'd say, um, is... Exploring the compensation and pension examiner's credentials or education or specific area of, of specialty. Um, you know, I think Dallas, you alluded to it a little earlier. Um, kind of the classic example, I, I have seen it, believe it or not, where, you know, you may have an orthopedic surgeon who is, for whatever reason, opining on a veteran's uh, depression or the severity of that condition. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, so, Rachel, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about how a veteran or an advocate might look at um, an examiner's credentials and refute those credentials as a way of attacking an unfavorable examination. Yes, right, Mike. So, in some cases, veterans may be able to argue that the examiner was not qualified to opine on their condition in the way that they did. So in addition to the example that you and Dallas gave, um, this is one that I have actually seen before, which was an OBGYN opining on a knee condition. You know, it's not someone that you would expect to have the proper specialty to look at your disability. So while VA examiners are initially presumed to be competent to render their opinion, um, we've had cases like Nor v. McDonald, which was decided by the court in 2014, and also Frankway uh, v. Wilkie, decided by the Federal Circuit in 2019, 
where they've confirmed that a veteran has the ability to challenge the competency of the examiner and request their credentials to ensure that they were actually qualified to render opinion that they did. So this is really important because once the examiner's competency is challenged, VA must explain why they found that examiner qualified to form that opinion. This can also come into play in cases where, as Dallas described, VA is weighing a private or independent medical opinion by a qualified examiner against a VA exam. And, and last, but certainly not least, Dallas lay evidence. Um, you know, veterans often submit lay evidence, uh, but there are a number of different types of lay statements that can be submitted. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. It's important not to underestimate how important lay evidence can be. In many cases, family, friends, and coworkers see firsthand how a veteran's condition prevents them from working, doing certain activities, building relationships, and so much more. These people can submit statements on the veteran's behalf explaining what they've witnessed and how the veteran's disability impacts their life in order to paint a fuller picture of the veteran's situation and highlight issues that maybe didn't come up during the exam. Veterans can also submit lay statements themselves. And with that, we've covered a lot of ways to refute VA exams. We want to stress that it's important to see whether a decision has been issued regarding your exam yet, because what review lane you choose will affect your ability to submit new evidence. If you're looking for more information on the AMA review lanes, we have several resources on our website. Great, great point. Great resource for individuals to take a look at now that we're, you know, fully in since 2019, the new appeal system. And there are very specific timeframes and windows in which veterans can and cannot submit um, some of the evidence that we just described. Um, unfortunately, regardless of how prepared a veteran may or may not be for an exam, or whether they know and they execute some of the tips that we've talked about here um, when they attend the exam, oftentimes examiner's reports are unfavorable. Um, so if you find yourself facing an unfavorable CUP exam and you're unsure of what steps you can and should take to overcome it, the good news is help is available to you in a number of different ways. Accredited representatives, attorneys, our office CCK, um, other individuals have a lot of experience dealing with unfavorable CMP exams and executing ways to overcome those bad CMP exams and moving the case along to a stage um, where the issue can be supported, whether that's the legal argument or whether that is through the addition of um, favorable evidence to contradict or refute the examination um, in order to help veterans win the benefits that they deserve. Um, you know, CMP examiners are looking at a case um, and records for a short period of time often um, within, you know, just a, one day or one moment in time. You know, a veteran's case is, is not and should not be decided based on a 15-minute examination when there's a body of evidence, a body of records that may go back years, perhaps even decades on a condition. Um, so there's a lot of help available for you or veterans in general um, to tell their story and to advocate for them to get them the benefits, like I said, that they deserve. So for more information on CMP exams, including CCK's top tips and mistakes to avoid, um, please take a look at our blog and our website. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more. Thanks for watching.